In this video, we're going to take a look at 13 species in the tribe Bovini, which is the wild cattle group. One species which may be extinct, another that was only discovered in 1992, and a third that is being recreated by the backbreeding of its domestic descendants. Wild cattle play an incredibly important role in their ecosystems. They create and maintain grasslands, wetlands and woodland meadows by grazing, digging, wallowing and spreading seeds in their fur and faeces. The first species that diverge from the rest of the group, and the one that looks least like the typical image of cattle, is the saula. This animal was only discovered by the scientific community in 1992 in the forests of Vietnam. It was spoken about by locals, but ecologists thought it was just a myth, hence the nickname, the Asian Unicorn. At the time, it was the first large mammal discovery in over 50 years. The saula is the smallest species in the tribe Bovini, weighing just 80 to 100 kilograms and standing at about 85 centimeters at the shoulder. The saula has only been photographed in the wild four times. Some have also been captured, but unfortunately, all of these died when in captivity. The last sighting of the saula was in 2013, when it was pictured by a camera trap. There is even a video of a saula in captivity, but it's a bit sad to watch as it's a critically endangered, now possibly even extinct animal that died shortly after being filmed. Hopefully though, this elusive animal still lives on in the forests of Vietnam and Laos. The next split in the tribe saw the separation of the buffalo species from the boss and bison species. The buffalo subtribe can be separated further into the Asian and African buffaloes. The American bison, often called a buffalo, is not actually a true buffalo. There is only one African buffalo species, aptly named the African buffalo, often seen in wildlife documentaries battling with lions. There are five subspecies of the African buffalo. These vary wildly in size and appearance, so much so that some class the smallest, the forest buffalo, as a separate species. This subspecies is a reddish brown colour and its horns face back from the head rather than out to the side, giving it a very different appearance from the other subspecies. It weighs just 250 to 320 kilograms, less than half the weight of the largest subspecies, the Cape Buffalo, which weighs up to 870 kilograms. African buffalo are preyed upon by lions, hyenas and crocodiles, but very often buffalo come out the winner in these conflicts. There are four species of Asiatic buffalo. Firstly, there are the lowland Anoa and mountain Anoa, which are endemic to the islands of Sulawesi. Both are endangered species due to hunting by humans and habitat loss. They don't have any major predators, but their young can sometimes be taken by pythons and civets. The Anoas, the Tamara and the aforementioned Saula are the only solitary cattle species. The rest live most of their lives in herds. The lowland Anoa weighs in between 150 and 300 kilograms. The mountain Anoa is usually a little smaller, but can also get up to 300 kilograms. Tamara is endemic to the island of Mindoro in the Philippines. It is unfortunately critically endangered due to hunting from humans, spread of disease by domestic cattle and habitat loss. There are estimated to be less than 500 remaining but efforts are being made to save them from extinction so hopefully their numbers will rise. Similar in size to the Anoas, they weigh in between 180 and 300 kilograms. Humans are their only predator as there are no large predators on Mindoro. The largest of all buffalo species and the second largest of all wild cattle species is the water buffalo also called the Asian Buffalo. Weighing in at up to 1200 kilograms, these giants are native to the Indian subcontinent and Southeast Asia. They predominantly live in water and can create ponds to wallow in by digging with their horns and hooves. Their calves are preyed upon by leopards and the adults by tigers, mugger crocodiles and sometimes Asian black bears. But they are by no means easy prey, they have even been known to kill tigers, the largest of all cats. The water buffalo has been domesticated and is farmed for its meat and milk products. There are feral populations of domestic water buffalo in Australia and South America where they are classed as invasive species. There are over 150,000 in the Northern Territory in Australia where their population has to be managed. Crocodiles do hunt them in Australia but it's mainly up to humans to keep their numbers down. Water buffalo are even being used in rewilding projects across Europe to create wetland habitats like ponds and to graze wetland areas. They are being used as a proxy for the extinct European water buffalo, Bubulus marensis. Now we'll move to the other subtribe of wild cattle, Bovina, which contains two genera, bison and bos. There are two extant species of bison, the European bison, also called the Vicente, and the American bison. The European bison is slightly taller, but the American bison is heavier. The European bison went extinct in the wild in 1927 due to overhunting from humans and habitat loss. You're probably starting to see a trend here. Humans have put huge pressure on almost all the wild cattle species and have even caused the extinction of a number of them. But in the case of the European bison, we have a conservation success story. 
there were still 54 bison in Rizouz, and these captive European bison were used to recreate a population for reintroduction. In 1951, the first European bison were reintroduced to the wild, and reintroductions have been ongoing ever since. There are now over 7,500 European bison in the world, and almost 5,000 of them in the wild. Bison are ecosystem engineers and create openings in woodlands, which promote biodiversity. They do so by knocking trees and browsing, which allows sunlight to hit the forest floor, creating grasslands and meadows. In the absence of grazers and browsers, like the bison, closed canopy woodlands occur, and these can often be quite poor for biodiversity. The European bison doesn't get preyed upon very often, but wolves and brown bears may occasionally hunt them. They are formidable animals, weighing up to 920 kilograms, with some large bulls even coming in at a ton. The American bison can weigh up to 1200 kilograms. There are two subspecies, plains bison and forest bison. The lesser known forest bison is actually the larger of the two. The American bison was almost hunted to extinction as well. The forest bison was even thought extinct. Sadly, the American bison was called by Europeans in an effort to remove the food source of the Native Americans. Europeans knocked the American bison from a population of 30 million to just 325 animals. Thankfully, indigenous peoples and conservationists made efforts to save the bison and today there are more than 500,000. Bison maintain and create the American prairie, an ecosystem which would have once spanned across much of North America. They are the largest land animal in North America and are a keystone species there. They are preyed upon by bears and wolves, but it's never an easy battle against an adult bison. Both bison species can breed with domestic cattle, but only the female offspring are fertile. The hybrids are called beefalo, and there are even some feral herds of beefalo in the US. The wild yak is the closest relative of the bison. It is also a huge animal, weighing up to one ton. It lives in upland areas, mostly in the Tibetan Plateau. They are well adapted for the altitude and temperatures of the uplands, with thick long fur and no sweat glands. Wild yaks are native only to Asia. There have been domestic yaks for thousands of years, and they are classed as a separate species or subspecies, depending on opinion. They are often bred with domestic cattle to create zoo. These hybrids are larger than cattle or yaks, due to the phenomenon hybrid vigour. There has also been at least one instance of a yak being crossed with a bison. Wild yaks, especially young or injured animals, are preyed upon by wolves, black and brown bears, and occasionally snow leopards. Now we'll discuss the cuprae native to Southeast Asia, unfortunately it's thought that this animal is now extinct due to poaching and habitat loss. There is still some hope that it exists in very small numbers in the forests of Southeast Asia, but the last confirmed sighting was in 1969. The cows were a red-brown colour and the bulls a very dark brown, almost black, similar to a few of the species we're going to discuss next. Cupre is thought to have weighed up to 900 kilograms. The Banting is a close relative of the Cupre. It's endangered and its numbers are sadly decreasing. It too is native to Southeast Asia. Similar in colour and appearance to Cupre, it can also weigh up to 900 kilograms, but usually are a bit smaller. Banting are preyed upon by tigers and dole, also known as Asian wild dogs. There are domestic banting, which are smaller than their wild relatives. Domestic banting have been crossbred with zebu and taurine cattle. Their male and female hybrid offspring with zebu cattle are fertile which shows you how closely related they are to our common domestic cattle. On to the biggest of big hitters, the gaur, the largest of all wild cattle species and the largest land animal after elephants, rhinos and hippos. Weighing up to 1500 kilograms, the gaur looks like a giant version of the banting. Classed as a vulnerable species by the IUCN, the gaur is a formidable animal which has been known to kill tigers. The only animals that can hunt adult gaur are saltwater crocodiles and tigers. Unguarded young can fall prey to leopards and dole. Gaur are sometimes crossbred with domestic cattle for their beef. Gaial, which is a domestic species, is thought to be mostly descended from Gaur, but also has zebu and taurine cattle in its genetics, although its lineage is disputed. Last but not least, we have the aurochs. Yes, the aurochs is extinct, but in a way it's not. Our domestic cattle are domesticated aurochs, and there are more than one billion of them across the globe. The wild aurochs went extinct just over 400 years ago due to overhunting. The aurochs was a massive animal with large bulls thought to reach up to 1500 kilograms. There are three recognized subspecies, European, Indian and North African aurochs. It had similar coloring to the banting and gaur. Red brown females and almost black males with a pale stripe along their spine. It had massive horns and would have been difficult prey for the wolves bears, tigers and even cave lions which once lived alongside it. 
The Aurats may be extinct, but its DNA still lives on in our domestic cattle. Taurine cattle, the most common cattle, especially in Europe and the Americas, is descended from European aurochs. Zebu, or humped cattle, are descended from Indian aurochs. There is some debate about the African Sangha cattle. It could be descended from African aurochs, or Zebu, or Taurine, or even a mixture of all three. The aurochs was thought to be a keystone species across its range, creating habitats and food for myriad other species. Due to its ecological importance, efforts are being made to backbreed domestic cattle using primitive breeds to recreate the aurochs. Rewilding Europe and the Tauras project are already using these primitive cattle crossbreeds to boost biodiversity in their projects. Heck cattle, which have a bit of a dark history as they were bred by the Nazis, were the result of two brothers attempting to recreate the aurochs in the 1920s and 30s. This cattle breed closely resembles the aurochs, but it was created before there was any knowledge of aurochs DNA and the recreation was solely based on appearance. A lot of Spanish fighting bulls were used in the breeding, so the heck cattle are a very aggressive breed. With modern technology and understanding, an animal much more genetically similar to the aurochs can be bred. There are of course a lot of feral cattle running wild across the world. There are heck cattle living wild in Oostwaarderplassen, a Dutch rewilding project. There are the white wild cattle of Chillingham in England. There are the massive scrub cattle in Australia, which have been wild for decades, and are a mixture of zebu and taurine cattle. Some of them now even look like their extinct ancestors with similar coloration and large horns. There have been scrub bulls hunted in Australia weighing over 1200 kilograms, so these are massive wild animals. There are many extinct wild cattle species apart from the aurochs, most notably the longhorned bison, which weighed up to 2000 kilograms, almost twice the weight of modern bison, and had horns longer than two meters from tip to tip, much more than twice the length of modern bison horns. Some species are often mistaken for cattle, such as the wildebeest and the musk ox, the wildebeest is actually an antelope and the musk ox, despite its name and appearance, is in the same subfamily as goats and sheep. I hope you enjoyed this video. If there are any more interesting facts you think I could have added, let me know in the comments. Please like the video and subscribe to my channel to help the channel grow. Thanks for watching.